I stinks! So I watched Morbius. It was definitely a movie. It had lighting and actors and a script and set pieces. Honestly, it had everything it takes to be a movie for sure. But with that being said, that doesn't mean all of those elements lined up together to make a good film or even a half decent one. I guess I should start off by saying that this movie is really bad. And it's not like it's even bad where it's funny to watch, maybe even at home. This isn't even like a Netflix and chill type of film. Honestly, I think you'd be better off just watching SpongeBob or something. All right, Pinhead, your time is up. Who are you calling Pinhead? Anyone with the internet has seen the review bombs of this movie, and it's been very brutal, if I'm being totally honest. While I did expect the movie to be bad after years of reshoots and delays, I didn't expect it to be in the category of worst superhero movies of all time. I mean, you're sharing the same space with Ben Affleck's Daredevil, Halle Berry's Catwoman, and the first Suicide Squad. Like, that's not company that you want to be in if there's anything you can do about it. But as Hollywood usually does, there's always new movies to make, and therefore creating a new low to achieve through cinema. So I guess let's get this over with. I mean, that's exactly how the film made me feel. It's just silly. We follow Michael Morbius, a famous doctor who's been living with a rare blood disease that's very vague and not really explain of how it affects his physical body and his mental state, but they did mention how he has to take around three blood transfusions a day just to stay alive, so obviously it's not great. Using his expertise in the funding of his childhood best friend Milo, remember that later, using a dangerous gamble, Morbius seems to have found a way to synthesize the genes of bats into the blood of humans in an attempt to cure himself and the many people that harbor the same disease. Determined to save lives, Morbius attempts to use the cure on himself, and when it seems as if it's been a complete success and only life waits ahead of him for him and Milo, Morbius soon learns that the side effect to life is becoming a vampire. Okay. I'm kidding, obviously. Kind of. But honestly, that is pretty much the entire movie. I just reviewed Venom Let There Be Carnage if you want to go check that out after this video, but at least that movie is kind of funny with likable characters. But I mentioned that Sony is going through a thing right now where the studio's own insecurities are pretty much infecting all of the superhero movies that they're producing. To elevate my point, Morbius is trying so hard to let me know that there's something going more to this movie than what's on the surface. And man, is that a dumb way to go about an origin story for a character that most people know nothing about. The film shoves a couple of Venom references here and there, and while they stripped out most of the Spider-Man references throughout the movie, that was how it was marketed, so I'm not going to give Sony a pass for taking them out of the movie for the most part. I imagine those scenes and images were taken out because Sony doesn't even know what they're doing and what they can even do with the character of Spider-Man. Okay. Nothing in this movie is fleshed out for a movie that's supposed to be an origin story. The romance, the villain, the stakes, or the hero didn't get any type of help from the script, and the studios are just releasing another piece of shit. Okay. This has mostly been a thing with Sony, where they throw in a love interest very randomly, as if we are back in the early 2000s, and that's something that I like to give Marvel credit for. They don't really do a lot of romance, just mainly focusing on the characters that the audience wants to focus on, it's used very sparingly, like Clint's family or Gamora and Quill. Very subtle and never in your face. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really even remember the love interest character's name in this movie, so for the sake of it, we're just going to call her Anne. She was the doctor's assistant to Morbius throughout the film of his time working on the cure to his disease, but we don't really even get a timetable for that, so we don't even know how long they've been together or how they feel about each other. They just kind of kiss when Morbius becomes hot after taking the cure, and then unceremoniously dies 20 minutes later, just to come back at the end of the movie. It's the same thing for the villain Milo. He's a sympathetic character with reasonable morals and values for the first half of the movie, being Morbius' childhood friend, both fighting for the same fight, and through all unlikely odds of survival, made it through. Supporting Morbius not only morally and emotionally, but financially in the funding of his life's work. And when it's finally achieved, it's understandable that he would want to eat the fruits of his labor, no matter the cost. And when it's denied by the man that he stood next to his entire life, backstabbing him into an inevitable death, by the sense of Morbius' own morality, it leaves you wondering who you're even supposed to be rooting for. This is the type of nonchalant and lazy storytelling that leads the viewer into thinking, why am I even wasting my time with this? An empty and forgettable feeling after leaving the cinema with no lasting impacts, and if I'm being honest, I don't know how it goes up from here with Sony Pictures. 
I mean, they have the backbone of the animated Spider-Man franchise going on, but after that, it's just a barren wasteland of unknown characters that the general audience doesn't care to learn about, and honestly, neither do I. If somebody asked me to summarize this movie in a single sentence, I would say Morbius, the death of Sony Pictures. But what do you think of Morbius? It's a whole month later, and it definitely didn't get better the second viewing. Imagine that. But what do you think of Morbius? Do you think there's any room for improvement from the studios? And what would be your ideas? I have a couple myself, but I'll leave those for the comments. Make sure to go like and subscribe and go check out my Venom Let There Be Carnage video. That movie wasn't nearly as bad as this one, but that's all the words I got for today. So, bye.